Hey there! Hello and welcome to the technical section of Biopandit. This is Saurav, your very own Mahapandit and today I am going to talk about Glossom Substitution Matrix. Suppose you have two DNA sequences. You can align them in two different ways. Which one is the best alignment? Well, the best alignment is the one that best represents the matches among different characters. So, let us just define a matching algorithm. If there is a perfect match, such as A matching with A, T with T, G with G, the score is 1, otherwise 0. So, following this simple algorithm, these are the scores of the two alignments. The alignment with the highest score is the best alignment. The score matrix becomes more complicated for protein sequence alignment. Why? There are two reasons. First, the alphabet size has increased from 4 to 20. In DNA, there are only 4 bases, but in protein, there are 20 amino acids. The second reason is, for proteins, the scoring scheme of 1 for a match and 0 for a mismatch is not enough. Think of a protein complex. Hydrophobic interactions between a methionine and an isoleucine amino acid contributes most of the binding energy. In this case, a methionine to leucine substitution can have a very different impact on fitness compared to a methionine to arginine substitution. Methionine to leucine substitution conserves the hydrophobic interaction because both amino acids are highly hydrophobic in nature. But a methionine to arginine substitution will disrupt this interaction as arginine is charged. This means to maintain this interaction, in the course of evolution, methionine to leucine substitution is more likely to occur than methionine to arginine substitution. In other words, amino acid substitutions are too complex to be modeled using a scoring scheme of 1 for a match and 0 for a mismatch. So, in terms of how likely a certain substitution is, some substitutions should be given a higher score as compared to the others. The factors that influence the probability of mutual substitution are so numerous that theoretically predicting a substitution matrix is almost impossible. Rather, we derive such matrices by directly computing the actual substitution rates from real protein sequence alignments. Blocks substitution matrices or blossom matrix is one such example. These are the fundamental assumptions of blossom matrix derivation. First, blossom matrices are not based on any explicit evolutionary model. They are derived considering all amino acid changes observed in an aligned region are from a related family of proteins regardless of the overall degree of sequence similarity. Though proteins in each family share a common origin, but closer versus distal relationships are ignored, as if they were all derived equally from the same ancestor. This is called a starburst model of protein evolution. Blossom was developed by Hennikoff and Hennikoff in 1992. Imagine a simple case, three alphabets A, B and C and a block of sequences consisting only six sequences. Using this data block, first we count the frequency of occurrence of each amino acid. A occurs 14 times, B occurs 4 times and C occurs 6 times. Now we count the number of pairs of amino acids aligned in the same column. These observed frequencies are compared to the expected number of times an amino acid pair is aligned if we observe a random collection of amino acids. The observed probability of A aligning with B is 8 by 60, whereas the expected probability of A and B co-occurring together is 14 by 24 multiplied by 4 by 24 multiplied by 2. Why this factor 2? This factor 2 is there because we do not know how these sequences have evolved from their ancestor. Just consider alignment column 1. Whether it was A or B in the ancestral sequence, we do not know. So we simply consider both cases are equiprobable. If A and B are in the same alignment column, this means expected probability of A to B and B to A substitutions are equal. So, instead of considering AB expected and BA expected separately, 
we just use 2 into AB expected. The final step is to calculate the log odd ratio. You take a ratio of the observed and the expected frequencies of occurrences and calculate logarithm of base 2. This number represents how likely A to B substitution is considering the expected background substitutions. We do not use the exact logarithm value, rather we use its round off value. So this is how we generate our blossom matrix. In this matrix, a positive score implies that substitution is more likely than any random substitution. A negative score implies that substitution is less likely than any random substitution. One of the shortcomings of this method is that it overlooks the substitution bias that could occur if highly similar or highly dissimilar sequences are used to generate these matrices. To reduce this bias, Blossom matrices are generated for sequence blocks collected by maintaining a threshold sequence identity. The matrix built from blocks with no more than 50% of sequence identity is called Blossom 50. The matrix built from blocks with no more than 62% sequence identity is called Blossom 62. Similarly, there are other Blossom matrices like Blossom 80, Blossom 90 and so on. 